Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. Welcome back. Welcome, advanced listeners, to Class 18. And as always, we're going to start with a review. In the last class, we were looking at uh, the verb, well, the structure with there to be. And we've seen now, including some some more advanced structures, uh, there could have been, there should have been, there might have been, there may have been. And of course, in the class before that, we saw there was, there were, there will be more basic structures. So we've seen a lot of these structures with there and the verb to be and various motor verbs. There may, there could, there might have been and all these structures. Uh, so we're, I'm going to try a little review, a little review now, once again, using a bit of translation. Translation. All right, a little translation. Let's go. Puede que haya habido una fiesta at home en casa. There may have been a party. Okay, good. Now, if you're following along, you should know this structure by now. You should know these. You should be able to get all these right, okay? Debería haber habido una fiesta. There should have been a party. Very good. Podría haber habido una fiesta. There could have been a party. Very good. Debe haber habido una fiesta. Debe haber habido una fiesta. There must have been a party. Yeah, look. There are all the the floor is dirty, the place there's empty cups are sitting around here. It looks like there've been a lot of people here. There must have been a party. Hmm, there must have been a party. Podría haber habido más gente. There could have been more people. There could have been more people. Very good. Debería haber habido un guardia de seguridad. Do you remember this from yesterday? The same sentence yesterday. There should have been a security guard. A security guard. There should have been. There wasn't. Was there a security guard? No. There wasn't a security guard, but I'll tell you, there should have been a security guard because that place got destroyed. There should have been a security guard. Debería haber habido una gu un guardia de seguridad. There should have been a security guard. Podría Haber habido una llamada. There could have been a call. Let me turn on my phone because there could have been a call. I don't know. I don't know if there was a call or not, but there could have been a call. It's not impossible. There could have been a call. Debería haber habido más gente. There should have been more people. There should have been more people. I don't know why there weren't more people. There should have been more. There should have been more people. All right, now I'm going to read a little story for you. It's a little grammar story, the best kind, right? Uh, a story focusing on this structure with there to be. Uh, now, I'm not really calling it a story. It's, let's call it a, a reading, a page of, with, with, uh, with examples. But um, I'm going to read this for you and make sure that you follow along and, and understand the various uses of there to be in the following passage. That's what I'm going to call it, a text or a passage that I will now read. Okay, so pay attention. There have been a lot of complaints lately about the new service system. There must have been at least 30 complaints yesterday. There weren't any complaints with the old system. There's a person on the phone right now complaining about it, and there were three people in line five minutes ago making the same complaints. There doesn't appear to be a solution for the moment, so I expect there will be a lot of complaints in the future. There wouldn't be so many complaints now if there had been a better control system during the design stage. But since there wasn't a strict control system, I'm sure there are going to be a lot of complaints over the next few months. Next week, there will be a meeting between the designers and the service personnel. There will be arguments defending the old system and arguments defending the new one. One thing I'm sure of is that there won't be a final decision made until there is an agreement reached by the top management level. 
There's been a lot of money spent on changing the system, and there will be a lot of resistance to changing back to the old one. There's an old saying that goes, where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm sure that there will be a strong effort made to correct the defects in the new system. There's going to be a way to make it work better, and there are a lot of good designers here capable of making it work better. So there's still hope that there will be a final solution satisfactory to all involved. All right, so there you go. A lot of examples with there to be. I hope that clears things up. I hope you understood everything I said there. Let's, uh, let's move on now to one of my favorite exercises, the short answers. So here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a question. I just want you to answer it. Just give me a three-word answer, okay? Short answer, three-word, yes, I am. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Are you Spanish? Yes, I am. Do you like good food? Yes, I do. Am I Canadian? Yes, you are. Kyle? Yes, you are. Were the Beatles popular? Yes, they were. Okay, this is the sort of thing, three, three words, so the first word is yes or no, the second word is the subject, and the third word is the auxiliary verb, and of course, whenever we have the verb to be, there's no need for an, uh, an additional auxiliary verb. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Good. Do you like the cold? Cold, when I say the cold, I mean cold weather. Do you like the cold? No, I don't. Have you ever seen Paul McCartney in concert? No, I haven't. Or, yes, I have. Do you like olives? Yes, I do. Do you like olives, aceitunas? Okay, did you, did you hear what I said? I said, I said, do you like olives? But I said it quickly. Do you like olives? Yes, I do. Is Tio Pepe still a popular drink in Spain? Tio Pepe. Yes, it is. Are we related? No, we aren't. No, we aren't. Can we see each other? No, we can't. No, we can't. Does it rain here often? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't rain very often. At least I'm in Madrid, and in Madrid it doesn't rain very often. Are you a drummer? Una batería for a famous rock and roll group, for example. Are you a drummer? No, I'm not. Or maybe you are. So either yes, I am, or no, I'm not. Did Hitler have a mustache? Hitler. Did he have a mustache? Yes, he did. Is my name Bob? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Do I support a theater? mean, no, it's not. Could you speak Japanese when you were three? No, I couldn't. Is Toronto cold in the winter? Is Toronto cold in the winter? Yes, it is. It sure is. Toronto is cold in the winter. Mm. Canada, in general, is very cold in the winter. I'm sure everybody knows that, but um, it's definitely much colder than Spain. I'll tell you that. All right, let's move on. Well done. Let's, let's move on. Expression of the day. Okay, so what's the game plan? What are we doing here? What's going on? What's the game plan? And there, oh, well, there we go. The game plan is, I'm supposed to talk about the expression of the day. And in fact, I, I just did it. The game plan. The game, what's the game plan? It's like saying, what's the strategy? A good coach always needs a game plan, right? What are we going to do in this situation? What are we going to do in that situation? What's the game plan? What's the game plan? But we can use this casually in, in, uh, in sort of day-to-day situations. We say, What's the hey? What's the game plan? It's like, what are we doing? Get famous. So you're at the bar with your friends, and people have been there for a while, having a few canyas, let's say. And then you think, okay, well, hey, so what's the game plan? What are we doing? Are we are we going to move somewhere else? Are we going to go? What's the game plan? What's going on? What are we doing here? What's the game plan? There you go. The expression of the day. The game plan. All right. Let's move on. The game plan for me right now is to move on and to talk about... I'm going to talk about whatever I feel like talking about. Well, not really. I'm going to talk about to feel like. Because I feel like talking about this structure. I feel like talking about 
to feel like me apetece, apetecer, to feel like, ¿qué te apetece hacer? What do you feel like doing? Do you feel like having an ice cream? Do you feel like taking a break? Do you feel like discussing the grammar? Do you feel like reminding all the students who are listening that this must be followed by the gerund? Yes, I feel like reminding the students that we have to follow this structure by the gerund. I feel like saying that because it's important. I feel like reviewing it. I feel like spending a little bit of time on it, okay? ¿Te apetece dar un paseo? Do you feel like going for a walk? Do you feel like going for a walk? Yes, I do, in fact. I feel like going for a walk. I often feel like going for a walk, and I do. In the evenings sometimes, alone, I go for a walk. Because I feel like it. I feel like going for a walk. Me apetece ir al cine. I feel like going to the movies. I feel like going to the cinema. The cinema. I grew up saying movies. For me, the the word cinema, of course, I knew I knew the word, but I never really said it for cine until I came until I moved to, to Europe. In North America, everyone says the movies. I'm going to the movies. Oh, yeah, what, what movie did you see? I never said film until I came to Europe either. For me, film is, is artistic. And uh, in, in fact, in North America, when we say, ooh, a film, a foreign film, we think of something French or Spanish and exotic. Whereas the movies were Hollywood films. Sylvester Stallone blowing up a car with a bomb or something, and or a... Uh, you know, fighting against uh, criminals and bad guys and big explosions and guns. That, those, those are movies for me. Films are, are more sophisticated, uh, supposed to have maybe pro- probably better plots, probably much more artistic and, and, and you know, I, I suppose, I suppose uh, cultured people would have to say that they're better, but I love a good movie, an old movie that I don't have to think too much while I'm watching. And uh, for me, that's the difference. This is not a Cambridge English textbook definition of the difference between movie and film or cinema, yeah, movie or film, but I would always say the movies. And for me, a movie is, is something, uh, just, just a casual belly. But if you, if, if you want to watch something a bit more artistic, then we say, ooh, it's a special film. It's, a, it's, a, it's an Italian film. It's won many prizes for its artistic merit. Then I would always say film for that. But, you know, it's not, again, not a rule, but that's the way I see it. ¿Te apetece ir conmigo? How do you say that in English? ¿Te apetece ir conmigo? Do you feel like going with me? Do you feel like going with me? ¿Te apetece comprar el libro? Do you feel like buying the book? Do you feel like buying the book? Me apetece quedarme en casa. Uf, que estoy... Uf, I'm tired. Me apetece quedarme en casa. I feel like staying at home. I feel like staying at home. No me apetece ir a la fiesta. I don't feel like going to the party. I don't feel like going to the party. Mm. All right. Well, I just feel like staying at home. Do you, do you feel like studying? Do you feel like practicing the grammar? Do you feel like moving on to something else? Should we go on? Should we advance? Do you feel like that? Do you feel like moving on to a new topic? Like, do you feel like you've mastered this one so you might, we might as well move on? Okay. Do you feel like looking at today's vocabulary? All right. Vocabulary of the day. Yeah, all right, vocabulary of the day. How do you say in English, respirar? (sighs) Respirar. (sighs) To breathe. To breathe. I have to breathe. (sighs) I'm breathing. What am I doing? I'm breathing. (sighs) Arroz. Arroz. Rice. Rice. Remember, we're not saying rice, but rice, rice. Do you like rice? I like rice. I like rice a lot, actually. Descartar. To rule out. 
to rule out. This is a good one. Fra- phrasal verb to rule out. Don't rule out the possibility of winning the lottery. Don't rule it out. It's possible. Anything could happen. Don't rule it out. Okay? We They say um, when, when there's a death, someone has died, and the police do an investigation, they say they have ruled out murder. Murder means they've decided that it wasn't a murder officially, and they're saying, no, it's not a murder. They've ruled that out, and they're no longer going to continue. Uh, cons- they're not going to consider it anymore because they've ruled it out. En las afef- excuse me, en las afueras, las afueras, on the outskirts, on the, that was my Canadian accent, outskirts, but an American would say outskirts, outskirts, I say outskirts, on the outskirts, las afueras, on the outskirts. So um, a lot of people live on the outskirts of Madrid. I live in the center and uh but but I know I have friends who live on the outskirts. Inundar inundar to flood to flood. All right, very good. Flood. The verb to flood. Too much water. It's we're we're flooded. We're flooded. All right, it's time to talk about mathematical operations here. This is interesting. Pay attention here because it's not every day that you get to see this sort of thing in an English class, but it's very important. And so many of my students over the years, I've probably had a thousand or more students over the years, and so many of them say, wow, I, I really had no idea how to do this or how to say these words because they're often forgotten in English classes, but they have to be mentioned. So we're talking about Más, menos, multiplicado por, this sort of thing. So, más, plus, plus. Two plus two equals, con ese, equals four. Two plus two equals four. Menos, minus, minus. So, repeat this with me. Minus three minus two equals one. Multiplicado por times times 3 times 2 equals 6 dividido entre divided by divided by 6 divided by 2 equals siempre con ese equals 3 6 divided by 2 equals 3 10 plus 5 equals 15 12 minus 3 equals 9. 6 times 8 equals 48. 12 divided by 2 equals 6. Equals, equals, equals. Okay, we're completely out of time, which means I have to stop. But I want to review this a bit more because it's an interesting topic and there's a bit more vocabulary to it. So stay tuned. Well, tune in again, I should say, tomorrow. Same time, same place. I'll be back, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. Thanks for listening. My name's Kyle Miller, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.